Hello everyone, today I'm very excited to share my first favorites video for the year of 2014. And as many of you know by now, I have had the foundation bug for a little bit. Every year, once or twice, I go on this huge foundation binge. And I'm going to begin with the Sasha Camouflage Cover Creams. This is probably the most full coverage foundation I've tried in a while. And generally, I don't like super thick or heavy cream products because a lot of the time they don't really wear well. So the problem is that they look good, but they only look good for about a few hours. This product, on the other hand, I have this in two colors, Perfect Beige and Nude Beige. I really love the yellow undertone. It's very difficult to find cream foundations in particular that aren't too pink on my skin, but this line of makeup was made for those of women of color. And as many of you know, I have some acne scarring on the sides of my cheeks, my forehead, and actually I'm getting some problematic little spots on my chin, but this this camouflage cover cream covers them all. I don't have to use any extra concealer. You do have to set with powder and because the coverage is very full, I do recommend setting with a sheer powder because this camouflage is really truly full coverage and very buildable. I don't recommend setting with a powder foundation because it will look too heavy. So set with a loose powder and then set with the Sasha Fix It Spray. So basically what this will do is take down the powdery finish from the loose powder and it will also make it look a little bit more natural and again if you set it with powder and use the fix it spray it doesn't move so I have the regular cream foundation and I didn't like this as much I actually started out using these camouflage foundation tester kits and I have this in the light to medium color range so I have here shades 2 through 8 so it's a very wide range and it gives you lots of options because you need so little of this foundation this will still last you quite a while the camouflage dry down to a slightly more powdery finish so it has a more satin effect which is why it looks so matte but the cream foundation just the standard one is actually great for those with dry skin it doesn't hang on to the dry patches nearly as much as other cream foundations do but I still prefer the camouflage because there's that extra bit of coverage even with this cream foundation I do feel that I need to use the camouflage and go back and tap it onto my blemishes or my acne scarring but I do think this is a good foundation for those of you who do like less coverage. Whether you want the full size or this very convenient palette, you can score 50% off with the code RAY. And I do recommend you take advantage of it. If you're a makeup artist, this will be a great purchase for you because you can mix and match your shades. And now because it was highly requested, I'm going to share a little update on how I feel about MAC's face and body foundation. So first, I will say that I am not C3. I am actually C2 based on the two colors that I did purchase at IMATS. I am between C1 and C3 and these are the larger bottles. I wasn't aware of it when I purchased it but apparently at Nordstrom or any department store you can buy the itty bitty 1.7 fluid ounce version and these are the four fluid ounces. But I am glad to have this because I actually do like this foundation. I find that the best way to apply it is to pour a few drops of each color into my hand since I do have to mix for my perfect shade and then I just go ahead and rub the foundation to Together, and it sort of thickens on my face as I'm massaging it in. So if you haven't tried the YSL Glossy Stains, let me see if I have one here. Nope, of course, when I do need one, I don't have it. But if you have tried Armani's Glossed Armani's, then you will know it has that same transformative texture. So it starts out really thin, water light fluid. Oh, I'd look, I do have one here. So it's like a YSL glossy stain, except for foundation. So it's not an entirely new concept, but it does have that long lasting, thickening, you know, sort of buildable coverage. I do wish that we could tone down the shine factor a little bit, but that's what matte powders are for. So again, if you set it, it shouldn't be a problem. And I've actually been using the new Urban Decay Naked Skin on top of it. This is the Ultra Definition Loose Finishing Powder and I have this in the color Naked Medium Light. I think I'm actually going to buy the light version as well because I absolutely love it. It is a super silky fine powder and this is probably the 
best thing that you can buy that is comparable to La Mer's Loose Powder. La Mer's Loose Powder has that same very fluid, very silky texture, but it has a little bit of shimmer, whereas this Urban Decay Naked Skin Powder has no shimmer whatsoever. So I do love that it's completely matte, and it's just the right color for me because it has that warm yellow undertone. So I do love this, and I highly recommend it. I've been using my MAC 187 to apply it, and I do think that this is the best brush for it. And since I brought up a powder, I'll go ahead and talk about my second powder for this video. This is a powder foundation by Dior, and this is the new Nude Powder Foundation. So this is a compact, and I absolutely love it. It just feels like a more traditional powder foundation. That being said, it moisturizes really well. It's not too glowy or dewy, and I just find that it just really melds into the skin unlike heavier powder foundations do. So this one can be worn alone, which I love, and it can also be worn to set on top of liquid foundation. So I bought 20 to set in the center of my face, and then I purchased 30 to use all over my face. I still think I prefer my Armani 4 for setting with liquid foundations, but when I want a little extra coverage, I'll reach for the Dior. Now for a brand new product that I'm very excited to talk about. This is the 3 Lab Aqua BB with SPF 40. I absolutely love that it has SPF 40, and this is one of those new popular BB creams that comes in a compact form. So it's not a cream foundation, it is a cushion compact. So so this is a very cool new trend in Asia right now, and it comes with a liquid foundation underneath this sponge here. And you have this really interesting plastic synthetic applicator, and it soaks up the foundation without the traditional porous feel of a, for example, beauty blender sponge. And it does get a little dirty because it's white on top, and it feels like a tinted moisturizer. It does have standard BB cream coverage. It's a little bit more coverage than I expected, which is great, but it doesn't cover my hyperpigmentation completely. It has a very thin, like, skin feel, but it does cover well. It's interesting, and it does give me a little bit of shine down the center of my face but it, it looks natural. It doesn't look like I'm oily or sweaty. And if I'm just running errands, I'll wear it by itself, but if I do want a little extra coverage, I'll just use a powder foundation like Dior Nude on top. And so I'm just gonna show you really quickly how this works in case you've never seen a cushion compact before. You just press the applicator pad into the sponge, and here's your foundation. I like to tap along the sides of my face and swipe on areas where I need less coverage. I've used this Aqua BB in number two, the medium shade, but I definitely want to try one, the light version, just because it does oxidize a hint. I'll definitely see how they compare along the jawline as well as on the rest of the face, and I'll report back next month. So now we're going to move on to some color. I have two lipsticks to share with you today. First, we have the Tom Ford 29 Vampire Kiss lipstick that I'm wearing. I absolutely love it, and it's more moisturizing than any of my Tom Ford lip colors, actually. It has a very fluid texture once the warmth of my lips hits it. I applied it directly from the bullet without any lip liner, and I will say that this is the first Tom Ford lipstick that I've encountered that I would apply lip liner first. Vampire Kiss is that perfect mix between pink and red. It has sparkles in it, which really brighten up the lips, and it makes my thin lips look a lot fuller. I also love that the color brightens up my teeth. So if you decided to skip on Crimson Noir, which is one of my favorite reds of all time. You cannot skip Vampire Kiss. If you're more of a nude lip person, then you'll want to hear about this lipstick. This is Giorgio Armani's Rouge Ecstasy in 103. Previous to this purchase, I thought that Beige 100 was my favorite nude from Armani, but turns out Beige 103 is actually more of a pinky tone, and it just looks super flattering on the lips. It's my, it's definitely one of those my lips but better neutral nudes, and I just love that it doesn't look too much on my lips, but it's not too brown either. And 100 is great for those of you who like a true natural nude tone, but if you like a little bit more color, then try 103 first. Now for some Glam Glow products. I am loving this stuff because I finally gave into the hype. I totally understand what it is now. It's not even just the results that you see, it's just how it feels. It's a very unique mask, and I've tried lots of sulfur, of ac lots of different acne masks in the past, and this Super Mud Clearing Treatment is probably my favorite. You can use this as a spot treatment as well, which I'm going to try more of. It's a very itty bitty container, and so it is expensive, but I'm definitely going to be repurchasing this. I will show you 
the texture since it does look a little intimidating it has particles in it so when you spread it across the face it is a little bit more difficult to get an ultra thin layer I like to go back and add extra to any blemishes or active blemishes and after three or so applications you'll really see this product pulling out the blackheads. So as many of you know, I do have blackhead issues, especially around the nose, and this stuff really does work. So it doesn't dry out my skin as much as I thought it would, which is probably the best part because a lot of these masks tend to dry out my entire face. And here I'm going to talk to you about the original. This is the Youth Mud Tingle Exfoliate Treatment. This one isn't quite as intimidating, and I personally like the way this smells a lot. It has a slightly fresh, pepperminty scent and this is more of a brightening treatment whereas super mud is more of a clearing treatment and beautychoice.com actually has a great limited edition set this is the cure sexy campaign and 25% of profits will be donated to breast cancer research if you've been interested in the youth mud definitely take advantage of this special edition offer and that way you can also help donate to a really worthy cause so it's again exactly the same product but it comes with a little ribbon detail on top instead of their traditional star pack Packaging. And now for some new hair products. I've been using macadamia oil again just because I love the way it smells. I like the deep repair mask the most because I do run through masks quite quickly. And this macadamia oil version really does work for my hair because it has a really thick nourishing texture. So I like masks that are really rich for my hair just because I do have the ombre highlights and I just want to make sure that my hair doesn't get damaged from all the coloring. Now the macadamia oil is something that I used to use before I discovered Shiomora. I do find however that mixing this into my leave-in cream, so before I blow dry my hair, I'll use a drop or two of this and mix it in with the hair drying cream and run it through the ends of my hair and it really does help to keep my hair less frizzy. So actually beautychoice.com is having a big sale and you can get 30% off any Glam Glow product. And with your purchase, you'll receive two deluxe size samples like this one here. This is the Super Mud Mask and this is perfect for travel to use as a spot treatment. And if you've been on the market for a new hair mask or a new hair oil, check out Macadamia products because they'll be 40% off on beautychoice.com. And I did try most recently the Dior Creme de Rose Lip Balm. I featured it in my last makeup tutorial. I do like it. The pink tone of this lip balm is very natural and it does nude out the red in the lips. The only issue that I have with this Dior Creme de Rose lip balm, however, is the SPF 10. It does dehydrate my lips. I thought that this lip balm, like most lip balms with SPF that break me out, would cause my lips to peel and crack. I didn't experience that with this, which I was surprised about, but it does still leave my lips feeling very parched and very dry. If you're looking for an SPF lip product, this is definitely my number one recommendation. But for those who have even more sensitive lips than I do, you might want to just stay on the safe side and avoid any lip balms with SPF. And to really wrap things up, I just wanted to talk to you quickly about my Chinese laundry shoes. I love cage booties at the moment. I just find that they really help to make your feet look elongated with pants. But I have the lace-up version and I just find that this butterfly shape is really beautiful on the foot. They're totally different shoes even though they're the same cutout booty style. I just wanted to share with you that for sizing purposes that these run a little bit large. So I purchased a six in both pairs but in the lace-up the six fits perfectly. But these run so large that I definitely could have down sized down to a five and a half or I think even a five. Nonetheless, I love them and they're super lightweight. I do recommend scuffing the bottom so that you don't slip around as much. I think that the lace-up versions are a little bit more sturdy, but some people may find them more stiff. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you all very soon. Bye!